we have started two new sections uh, on our channel the graphs in physiology and medicine and clinical case based mcq discussion apart from this uh, there will be daily mcq uploads which you will get to solve uh, and there will be periodically uh, quiz contests announced and grand prizes to win so don't forget to subscribe so that you get notifications for all of these now let's come to the today's academic content and it's related to the graph that uh, it's a graph of the respiratory membrane and how the gases behave across the respiratory membrane this is the graph that tells us as an inhaled gas reaches the alveolus how it diffuses or does not diffuse into the pulmonary blood and whether it reaches equilibrium or not that is what is shown in the graph let's come to the graph in a while but uh, before that let's start with the basics and that is the concept of equilibrium we gave a gas by inspiration by inhalation it reaches the alveolus and its partial pressure in the alveolus would rise because obviously it has it has increased its concentration in the alveolar air now it starts diffusing into the pulmonary blood obviously and we have assumed that in the pulmonary blood this gas was not present at all or was minimally present so its partial pressure was almost zero in the pulmonary blood that means the gas will now start diffusing from the alveolus into the pulmonary blood that is from high concentration to low concentration or from high pressure to low pressure as the gas is diffuse so it starts diffusing into the pulmonary blood which means its partial pressure in the pulmonary blood will now begin to rise and a time will come when the partial pressure of the gas from the alveolus and in the pulmonary blood both will become equal and the gas has re reached equilibrium now no more diffusion will occur from alveolus to the blood the diffusion will stop because on both sides of the membrane its partial pressure has become equal equal the gas has reached equilibrium simple all right uh, let me add one more point here and that is we are talking about diffusion across the respiratory membrane when we say from alveolus to the blood we mean it crosses or diffuses through the respiratory membrane alveolo capillary membrane that is it has some components of the alveolar wall and some components of the wall of the pulmonary vessel it has to cross all those layers and then it reaches the other side so we are now talking about the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane diffusing capacity means how much a gas will diffuse per minute across the respiratory membrane let's come to the oxygen oxygen diffuses from the alveolus uh, to the pulmonary blood and its diffusing capacity through the respiratory membrane is said to be 21 to 23 ml per minute per mm of hg means if the pressure gradient across the respiratory membrane is 1 mm of hg pressure gradient remember means difference between alveolus and pulmonary capillary if the difference of uh, partial pressure is 1 mm of hg then in 1 minute 23 ml oxygen will diffuse if the pressure gradient is 2 mm of hg then in 1 minute 26 ml will diffuse and so on so that's the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane that is how it is expressed uh now coming to the graph we want to measure the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane there are various conditions in which the diffusing capacity is decreased or altered influenced and therefore we want to measure the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane so the question is which gas do we use whether it is oxygen whether it is carbon dioxide whether it is carbon monoxide and if we use carbon monoxide why do we use it that's the description of this graph all right so first things first note it down 
दैट वी यूज कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड और वी कैन यूज कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड टू मेजर द डिफ्यूजिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द रेस्पिरेटरी मेम्ब्रेन कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड देर फॉर आई मीन द इट्स कॉल्ड एज डी एल सी ओ डिफ्यूजन लिमिटेड कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड डी एल सी ओ कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड इज सेट टू बी अ डिफ्यूजन लिमिटेड गैस वाई इज दैट वी विल सी दैट इन अ मोमेंट ओके नाउ इमेजिन दिस दैट यू गेव अ गैस by inspiration and as soon as it reached the alveolus it instantly diffused into the blood and instantly reached equilibrium such a gas will not be useful to measure the diffusing capacity because it hardly gave us any time any chance to measure uh, how much uh, gas has crossed across the membrane how much time did it take to reach equilibrium etc it instantly reached equilibrium we will require such a gas that if if it is given by inhalation it reaches the alveolus from there it starts diffusing into the blood and it keeps on diffusing it keeps on diffusing it keeps on diffusing means it never reaches equilibrium it just goes on diffusing remember what what i told you at the start when the gas diffuses and reaches the pulmonary blood its partial pressure in the blood will rise and at one time at one point of time alveolar uh, partial pressure and partial pressure in the blood will become equal and then the diffusion will stop the gas has reached equilibrium but imagine a gas you gave it by inhalation uh, from the alveolus it diffuses into the pulmonary blood but its its partial pressure in the pulmonary blood remains almost zero does not rise even after lot of diffusion it is it keeps diffusing keeps diffusing through the uh, respiratory membrane but its partial pressure in the blood is not rising this gas is useful for us because from the rate of its diffusion per minute we can measure the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane it is see the gas that reach instantly reached equilibrium we could not have measured the diffusing capacity because it stops diffusing instantly this gas it continues to diffuse continues to diffuse and why does it continue to diffuse because it is diffusing going into the pulmonary blood but its partial pressure in the pulmonary capillary blood is not rising hardly rising and therefore it keeps diffusing which gas is that that gas is the carbon monoxide all right and therefore carbon monoxide is chosen or it can be used to measure the diffusing capacity of the respiratory membrane and that is what is shown in this graph the behavior of carbon monoxide uh, across the respiratory membrane and comparison of the carbon monoxide with other gases all right so let's check it out uh, on the horizontal axis we have time in the pulmonary capillary blood now look uh an average rbc takes about 0.75 seconds to cross the pulmonary blood i mean from the pulmonary artery the blood enters the lungs then crosses alongside the alveoli and then goes into the pulmonary vein so this is the uh, its transit time the transit time for the rbc an average rbc in the pulmonary blood it is about 0.75 seconds and this is said to be the rate of pulmonary blood flow 0.75 seconds let's see in this 0.75 seconds can a gas reach equilibrium let's say n2o nitrous oxide uh, can be given as an inhalational anesthetic so you gave n2o by inhalation it reached alveolus and then instantly diffuses into the pulmonary blood its partial pressure in the pulmonary blood rises instantly instantly and it reaches equilibrium so that its further diffusion will stop check it out uh, n2o gas has been shown here like this in no time its partial pressure has increased in the pulmonary blood 
and this orange line dotted line shows equilibrium the partial pressure in the blood rises and the gas reaches equilibrium n2o has reached equilibrium almost instantly and then its diffusion will stop it reaches equilibrium coming to the carbon monoxide watch it carbon monoxide was given by inhalation and from alveolus it starts diffusing into the pulmonary blood you can see even after 0.75 seconds its partial pressure is hardly rising see on the vertical axis uh, it's not going up much so that's the carbon monoxide for you and this is the reason why we can use carbon monoxide uh, to measure the diffusing capacity you gave it by inhalation it reached the alveoli from alveoli it starts diffusing into the blood well it goes into the blood goes into the blood but its partial pressure in the blood does not rise or hardly rises that is what is shown in this particular graph now the question is uh, why this happens there are two reasons why this happens that the carbon monoxide its partial pressure does not increase first thing to be noted is that its solubility in the pulmonary uh, uh, I mean respiratory membrane or alveolo capillary membrane is low low solubility in the alveolo capillary membrane which is which, uh, which is being crossed by the gas so it diffuses very slowly all right slowly diffusing and that becomes a limiting factor for its uh, reaching of equilibrium for which reason it is called as diffusion limited gas diffusion across the respiratory membrane becomes a limiting factor for reaching of equilibrium it diffuses very slowly across the respiratory membrane point number one and point number two is that its partial pressure in the pulmonary capillary blood does not rise even though it is diffusing it is reaching the pulmonary capillary blood but its partial pressure is hardly rising why is that because the moment carbon monoxide enters the blood it enters the rbc's instantly and binds to the hemoglobin carbon monoxide has got 200 times more affinity uh, to hemoglobin compared to oxygen affinity for hemoglobin so it binds hemoglobin and you know the fact the gas that binds to hemoglobin cannot exert the partial pressure the gas that remains free in the plasma will exert the partial pressure in the case of carbon monoxide as it enters the blood slowly it immediately enters the rbc's and binds with hemoglobin nothing remains free in the plasma or hardly so its partial pressure in the blood will not rise much and because the partial pressure in the blood does not rise therefore it keeps diffusing it keeps diffusing it keeps diffusing when will the diffusion stop when it reaches equilibrium does it reach equilibrium no no possibility no chance all right this is the reason why we use carbon monoxide uh, two things we have already mentioned both of them low solubility in the respiratory membrane so diffusion becomes the limiting factor for reaching the equilibrium and second its partial pressure in the pulmonary capillary blood remains near zero and why we've seen that already all right so that's what is shown in the graph remember uh, 0.75 seconds is the rate of blood flow through the pulmonary capillaries or rate of blood flow through the lungs and while the blood is flowing at that rate we can see what is the behavior of various gases carbon monoxide partial pressure not rising in the blood much n2o on the other hand its partial pressure instantly rising as shown in the graph and reaching equilibrium from alveolus to the blood what about oxygen that will be interesting oxygen uh, you can see that when the oxygen is uh, in the inspired air it diffuses from alveolus to the blood its partial pressure rises but little slowly 
it does rise because some of it will enter the hemoglo uh, in the RBC and bind with hemoglobin and some of it will remain in the plasma and the gas that remains in the plasma will uh, cause increase in the partial pressure of oxygen. So, you can see here that oxygen partial pressure is rising as shown by this line and at this time its partial pressure has reached the equilibrium level. So, uh, we can say in 0.3 seconds the oxygen reaches equilibrium from alveolus to the pulmonary capillary blood. 0.3 seconds oxygen takes that's uh, enough time. You know the rate of pulmonary blood flow is 0.75 seconds. An average RBC stays in the pulmonary capillary blood or near the alveolus for 0.75 seconds. So, oxygen has enough time. It, uh, it reaches only 0.3 seconds. See in the graph, within 0.3 seconds, somewhere here, it is reaching equilibrium. Alright, so that's the behavior of the oxygen. Somewhere between nitrous oxide and carbon monoxide. Uh, why carbon monoxide is dangerous gas? One reason is this that since it never reaches equilibrium from alveolus to the blood, it will keep on diffusing. See, if, if the gas is reaching equilibrium, then its diffusion will stop. So, that will be beneficial. Further diffusion will not occur into the blood. But in the case of carbon monoxide, one reason why it is uh, dangerous is that whatever amount is there for inspiring, all of it will go into the blood. It won't stop. Uh, it won't stop diffusing. Whereas nitrous oxide, good to give by inhalation anesthetic because uh, it is well controllable. I mean, you give it certain amount and it reaches equilibrium. Further diffusion will not occur. So overdose toxicity with nitrous oxide will not happen. It simply stops diffusing. And in the case of oxygen, so that's uh, what is shown in this graph. One final point about the oxygen. We have mentioned all the things related to the oxygen. One last point. Oxygen and carbon monoxide are called as perfusion limited gases. Perfusion limited means the blood for perfusion, the rate of perfusion will be the limiting factor, can be the limiting factor for reaching of equilibrium. How come? Well, uh, we said that oxygen takes about 0.3 seconds to reach the equilibrium, right? Okay. What if the pulmonary blood flow rate becomes less than 0.3 seconds? If the blood flow in the lungs, blood flow near the alveoli, its rate becomes less than 0.3 seconds, then what happens? Uh, there are certain situations like intense severe exercise and so on where this can happen and if that happens oxygen will not be able to reach equilibrium. I repeat once again what if an RBC stays for less than 0.3 seconds in the pulmonary capillary blood. Oxygen will not be able to reach equilibrium because oxygen needs at least 0.3 seconds to reach the equilibrium from alveolus to blood. So blood perfusion and rate of perfusion was the determining factor in the equilibrium of the oxygen and therefore it is called as the perfusion limited gas. So this was the graph for today. Hope you have understood all the elements of the graph and how to read a graph. Always first read the horizontal axis first and then take the things from there. So that's it for this video.